you know, everybody's concerned about Iran, uh, the Iran deal. Uh, very active on Facebook. We just posted a, a great article this morning by uh, on Facebook uh, from the New York Times opinion piece uh, that was really good. And then I followed up with a comment about uh, the Chuck Schumer and sort of the position that, that he has taken, which is surprising. Um, I haven't been a, a fan of the Iran deal as I watched the negotiations unfold because mm -hmm. I thought it was very poorly negotiated. And um, if you look at, and in the Facebook post I put out this morning, uh, we listed the stated objectives that the President and John Kerry had when they first started these negotiations two years ago. Um, we got none of that. Uh, mm -hmm. Iran will continue to enrich uranium. They still have um, um, uh, closed sites to inspectors. Um, we're giving them $150 billion in uh, sanctions relief and how that money may or may not be used. Iran's still an exporter of terrorism, and uh, I believe they'll use some of that $150 million to, to export weapons and, and financial assistance to a group like Hezbollah and Hamas. Um, they haven't said, you know, we're going to stop our, our uh, exporting of terrorism and uh, support. Um, so I just think it's a very poorly negotiated deal, and I think the world is less safe after this deal than it, than it mm -hmm. is today. Planned Parenthood. You know, uh, I, I said even before these videos are released, we shouldn't be funding uh, an organization that provides taxpayer dollars to fund abortion. And uh, I'm unabashed about my pro-life stance. When the videos have been released that show that uh, uh, they're harvesting fetuses um, during the abortion process in such a way to maximize their returns. They can merchandise uh, the body parts. is is alarming and sickening to me. And uh, I won't vote for any taxpayer dollars to fund Planned Parenthood at this point. And um, and that's just kind of where I'm at. And and I've signed on to Mick Mulvaney's letter, uh, which uh, urges our leadership to. Uh, to not include funding for Planned Parenthood in the next funding bill, whether it's an omnibus or a CR. And um, I'm gonna stand firm on that. And it may mean that we end up shutting the government down over that, but I think life is that important. And I'm on the record for saying that, you know, I shut the government down to protect life. The president will shut the government down to continue selling baby parts, and that's the difference. You just said that you might not endorse the candidate. What is that decision going to be based on? When is, is any idea of time frame of when you would want to make I didn't, that Well, decision? I didn't endorse last time, and I don't know that I'll endorse this time. Mm -hmm. I don't know, well, honestly, what sort of strength I bring. Some would argue with me on that, but um, you know, with what seventeen or eighteen candidates out there, you know, how do you and and mm -hmm. how do you pick one? So I don't know what I'll do. You know, I, I'm like every American. I, I watched the debate the other night, undecided. I'm still undecided, and I'm going to talk to these candidates. I've talked to a lot of them on the phone. I've talked to them at the Freedom Summit back in May individually. I talked to them in Iowa individually. Uh, and I'm just like every American. I'm still trying to weather well, the Well, how do you tell your constituents, you know, you're, if you're going to try to kind of lead them in picking the right candidate for the 3rd District, South Carolina, yeah. um, what kind of advice do you have for them as far as the process of essentially vetting, like you said, 17 folks in the field at this point? But the third district, if you think about it, we're a very, very conservative district, you know, Christian conservative district, Christian values play a big part in it. Um, so, so if I was going to get involved, some of those factors would have to, to weigh into the equation. But honestly, I hadn't thought about it beyond you asking me that question right now. You know, I, I, I then just like every other American, I've, I've watched with interest the rise of Donald Trump. I've watched with interest the, the rise of Ben Carson since he gave a, a, a speech at a prayer breakfast. I, I uh, have been fascinated with, uh, with Carla Fiorina and, and her background. And, um, you know, I know personally Ted Cruz and Rand Paul and Marco Rubio, and I've gotten to meet Scott Walker and talk with him a little bit. I would love to sit down with him a little, little more. Um, our backgrounds, you know, uh, are dissimilar, but uh, we have a lot of shared commonality. Um, so if you go through all those, Bobby Jindal's the same way. I mean, so if somehow I want to get to know better, and um, it's just it's this tough. I'm like Eric, like I go back to what I said earlier. I'm like you guys. I'm looking at it, going, you know, who is the right person that I want to be president of the United States? Who's got the, the capability and the qualities that? reflect with me personally, reflect with uh, my, my district, and uh, 
who ultimately can return America to greatness. And 